In other words, what all that means is that basically he is a is he is it's basically kind of like a techno organic being that was created simply to kind of study the effects of survival of the fittest and he ended up killing nearly everything and the scientists that created him had to basically seal him away because he was basically killing everything. All he knew was destruction. And he ends up landing on Earth and Doomsday basically, to put it bluntly, ended up he was the first person to actually make Superman bleed. And when I say bleed, I mean he basically could actually physically stab Superman with one of the rocky scaly <laughs> Yeah. Okay. Uh, uh. Sorry. <laughs> Ran out of a little bit of time, but anyway. No, dark no, Doomsday actually could he has really spiky body and I'll show you what he looks like. Just to give you a basic idea. This right here, the thing that Superman's fighting, that's Doomsday. Very scary looking, isn't he? And I was reading in my spare time while this video was uploading to a document that I have on my laptop. And this is what makes Doomsday even scarier. This is what makes him a very powerful Superman villain. He was basically, what this scientist did is that he left an infant on the surface. That infant died. He harvested the remains, cloned another one, and each clone became even more dangerous. And eventually, it gained. Eventually, with each clone, the each time that it cloned itself, it gained an immunity or the ability to survive. You know, when its next incarnation came. And in other words, if he got thrown into the sun. He couldn't die the same way. Think about that. That's some scary crap right there. <laughs> and it's also revealed apparently in this Doomsday Saga thing that Superman isn't necessarily invincible. That he's got this protective aura that subconsciously is around him. And that's why bullets deflect off of him and everything. If that aura was taken away from him, i.e., you know, with the red, you know, the red sunlight from Kryp from Krypton, he's pretty much normal. And Doomsday is one of the, like I said, Doomsday is one of the first people to make Superman bleed. I mean, he busted Superman's jaw. He basically slashed his cheek ripped up his costume, stabbed him in the side, probably punctured his liver or one of his lungs or something. And it's just this big knockout, dragout fight. And in the middle of this fight, Superman gets his ribs broken, his face is all completely bruised up, his lip is completely busted open, the right side of his cheek is lacerated. I think Doomsday even broke one of his arms, I'm not quite sure. And he does all of this, he accomplishes all of this without the use of kryptonite. And what makes it even worse is that it's televised live in the comic. And they do that in the movie. Now, unfortunately, Doomsday actually had a, a sense of intelligence in the comics. You know, he could actually speak, he was intelligent. Whereas in the animated movie, you know, in... In this movie, they just make him this mindless, mon you know, monsterish brute that's almost androidic. I mean, it's destroying Metropolis, but you don't see other characters like the Justice League try to fight him because in the comic, nearly every hero in in the Justice League and in the DC universe fight this guy, or at least a good majority of them. Guys like Guy Garner and Supergirl and all kinds of other characters and they get the shit kicked out of them by Doomsday. And so what ends up happening because of that is you know Superman goes in he tells everybody stand back I'll take care of this. Super and like I said that's basically what happens to Superman and unlike in the movie in the movie he basically kills Doomsday by pile driving him into the ground and, you know, breaking his neck. 
That didn't happen in the comic. It wasn't some 30 minute fight. Doomsday basically annihilates Superman and then goes on to destroy other buildings and stuff. You know, ravages around the country. He just, he stalks away and nothing's ever, nobody ever hears from him again. Now keep in mind, Kryptonite to this point in the comics was the only thing that could actually weaken or kill Superman. So the fact that DC created a character, let alone a supervillain like Doomsday, who is so immensely powerful that he can basically bust open or like lacerate Superman's cheek is unbelievable. But then they go a step further and they actually kill Superman and he kills Superman with his own bare hands. You know, for the time, especially when I was a little kid, that was traumatizing. I mean, that was, it's about as traumatic as when Captain America gets, you know, shot dead at the end of the Civil War storyline. Or in the 1986 Transformers film when you see Optimus Prime get killed. You know, Superman is one of those just iconic figures that you look at and you never think is going to die. You know, because he's, he's too good. He's too iconic. But you got to understand, too, is that during that time in the comics... Hold on, my cat's trying to... Get away from there. Sorry. Cat was trying to play with my tripod. But... Back during that time, Superman wasn't really selling that well. And back during the 90s, in general, comic books weren't really selling that well. Or there weren't an immense amount of storylines. And Superman wasn't selling all that well for, for DC. And so DC kind of thought, you know, okay, we'll kill the character off. You know, much like, you know, they did to Optimus Prime. Much like, you know, how they... Actually, there's no comparison that I can make that to. They just, DC thought, you know, well, Superman's had a really good run. He's lasted, I think up to that point, it was like more than 40 or 50 years. And somebody can correct me in the comments on that as well. But Superman gets killed and big, huge public outcry. You know, mothers are upset. Kids are basically locking themselves in their rooms like they did with Transformers. I mean, people all around the world were stunned, not just in the DC Comics universe, but in real life, people were upset. You know, because it's like, how, because it's like, how the hell can you kill, can you kill the Man of Steel? You know, he's one of the most beloved comic book characters aside from Spider-Man at that point. And when DC saw this, they took advantage of it. And that's where it kind of bleeds into the world without Superman part. And in, and in that part, Superman had this big funeral. This big funeral and this, you know, gravestone memorial. Which they kind of uh, embellish or kind of go a little bit as over the top as they did in the comics and the, in the Doomsday movie. But one thing that they didn't do in that funeral scene in the movie that I did not like that they did in the comics and I liked it was that, yeah, they show Jimmy Olsen, they show Lois Lane, they show Martha Kent. But then I was sitting there looking and I'm like, okay, where's, where's the Justice League? Where's, you know, the Flash? Where's Batman? Where's Robin? You know, where's Green Arrow? Where's Steel? All these other characters that were you know, that Superman had touched, it was this big, massive memorial. Everybody laying roses, everybody, you know, like, lighting incense, they have a cute scene. And this shows even a dark and brooding character like Batman actually cried. Like, he didn't hardcore cry, but, you know, Bruce Wayne sh sheds one or two tears underneath his cowl as he lays a, ro uh, lays a rose on Batman's grave. And we see Jimmy Olsen just bawling and he puts this this really touching picture of like you know him and Superman in a buddy buddy pose onto the grave so <coughs> and the last thing that they do is that they have of course they drape the American flag like they would you know a US soldier but then Lois Lane and Martha Kent both walk up in unison and they put his cape over the American flag